Hi friends, my name is Kenton Whitman and together with my family, we aim to share wilderness skills, mindfulness practices, wild edible plants, family adventures, and skills that break you free from the limits of civilized life. Join us by subscribing to our channel and joining our YouTube family. Hi friends, winter again in Wisconsin all of a sudden here. <laughs> But it is close to, if not the time, for ticks to start being crawling around in the woods again. And if you are an outdoors person, if you're in the south, the ticks are probably out in force already. And I would say that's in the top 10 of the most common questions that I get via email is how do you deal with ticks? And that's, it's a good question because wow, we all, you know, we love the woods, we love being outside in nature, but then there is this big danger essentially of the ticks and the diseases that they carry. I Becca, how many times have you had Lyme disease? Just once? Twice. I'm, I'm not sure. Well, yeah, maybe twice. Inconclusive. And I'm I'm a four-time veteran. So, we have experience with this. We've definitely been down the lime road before and it's not really fun but when people are looking for a solution to ticks we always you know the common solutions that you're going to see online or offered up are are the ones that really don't take any work what bug spray do you wear what clothing do you wear and you've probably heard me say you know every day our family we do a full check on each other so that's all the cracks you got to check everywhere on you and really make sure that there's not a tick there if you do it morning and night if you're outside even better but there's also a, a secret that I am pretty convinced has helped me with ticks and this one takes more work it's more subtle it takes some time but even though I have had Lyme disease four times I would say it's been 10 years for me now right or more yeah, and a big part of that is because, believe it or not, trickety almost just landed on you, Rebecca. <laughs> I feel the ticks crawling on me. Now, I'm not going to say 100% of the time, but a good amount of the time, and it's much more than I used to. And this is a tactile sensitivity that we can develop. What I'm going to give you here is a meditation that will help you to experience this for yourself if you want to try it out. Now, if you've been with the channel a while, you may have seen my sensory meditation where we go through all of the senses and we essentially try to heighten and expand the power of our senses by becoming very aware of each sense in turn. But today I'm just going to talk about a meditation you can do just for your tactile sense. And the idea here is if you go blindfolded for a while then you're going to start tuning into your hearing and your hearing will get better it will you'll start to develop the ability to naturally do some echolocation and you will hear things that you just didn't hear before you are developing more awareness of that sense you know senses they're always running but we tend to give very little awareness or attention to most of them. And our tactile sense is this amazing sense. Right now, if I pay attention, there are so many tactile sensations going on. From muscle tensions, my legs are spread so I can be down at the right height here for our tripod. The, the uh, hat here on my head, the wind, the little cold in my fingers, the warmth of the sun on this cheek. There's a lot going on. That's just scraping the surface of the tactile sensations available to me but for the majority of the time especially in the past when I was just standing here talking to you I would have no awareness of any of those tactile sensations this is the general closing in of awareness that happens to we modern people where our our circle of attention becomes very very small and someone could walk by right over here. I wouldn't hear them or see them or have any awareness of them. Not that my senses are not picking them up, 
but there's no awareness of that sensory input. So this is kind of important to remember that your senses are already very powerful. It's just that mentally we've shut down the ability to be aware of that sensory input. To do this meditation for your tactile sense, what you're going to do is you are just going to, wherever you are, stand, lie down, sit down. It helps to do this in a place where there's not too many other strong sensory inputs. And then you want to close your eyes, so we're reducing our sense of vision. And then try to mentally turn off your other senses. Essentially, we are trying to just put our awareness on our sense of touch. As you do this, you're going to start paying attention to the actual touch sensations that you're experiencing. If you are laying down on the forest floor, you're going to be feeling that pressure of your back, your heels, your butt, the back of your head against the ground. You might feel a certain softness or hardness of the ground depending on the texture that you're sitting on. You might start to feel the clothes around you. You might feel your hair brushing against you or some wind coming across your face. You can get even more detailed. Once you think that you have felt all the sensations, see if there's some you've been missing. I'm going to give you some clues. Just pay attention to your head for a moment. You may notice, oh, there's a sensation, a very definite sensation of my eyelids being pressed together and the slight muscular tension that I'm using to keep my eyes closed. You may find that you can feel your tongue in your mouth and where it's pressing against the roof of your mouth. You may feel the sensation in your teeth. If you pay attention, you can almost just feel your teeth. And if they're touching together, they'll be a, they're very sensitive to pressure. You'll feel a little bit of that pressure sensation. As you're breathing, the slight, slight sensation of air going in and out of your nose. Amazing richness of tactile sensation just happening in this section of my body when I give my attention to it. And if you switch your attention to any other part of your body, you're going to feel a lot going on. All you do is you sit in that sense of touch for a little bit. It can be a few minutes, it can be 10, 15 minutes if you want to really soak into it. And you add a layer to it. If you can escape the sensation that you are the one doing the feeling and you can just become that sense of touch. It's a little difficult to explain how to do this, but you may feel a switch over at some point during this meditation where you go from, okay, I'm paying attention to this, I'm paying attention to that, and you suddenly realize you don't have to have the construct of a me doing the feeling, the touching. You can just have, you can just become, essentially, that tactile sensation. When you do that, it's going to really kind of close down the other senses, put your full awareness on that tactile sensation. And every minute that you spend in your sense of touch is going to heighten that sense of touch. When we do this on a regular basis, with any sense, it's going to enliven and enrich that sense for us. When we do it with the tactile sense, I have found personally that it opens up a world of tactile sensation and it has helped me to become aware of that very soft, gentle sensation of a deer tick crawling up my leg, for instance. You may not feel it for the tiniest, tiniest ticks, but I think probably all of us have had examples where we felt even those tiny, tiny little ticks crawling over the surface of our skin. And this gives you an added layer of protection. So maybe you use a spray, maybe you use clothing, maybe you do those tick checks every night. You've now added a great new layer of protection for yourself from those ticks. And in doing so, you're becoming more conscious of your awareness, your attention, 
and your senses. And that just adds to our mindfulness. So unlike the spray, which maybe has dubious health effects, this is a tick prevention technique that you can use that even if it doesn't help you with the ticks, it's gonna add a lot of other goodness to your life. And by the way, if you're worried that this technique will make you more sensitive to something like pain, at least in my experience, that hasn't been the case. You know, when I did, I had my shoulder surgery, intensely painful surgery, I used no drugs to deal with that pain. And that was just by feeling the pain, actually feeling the sensation I was having. And so when we become more, quote, sensitive, I don't mean sensitive in the sense of being weaker to it, but I mean sensitive and more able to tune into what you're actually experiencing when you're dealing with pain, when you can feel what you're actually experiencing pain-wise and not add to it mentally, the pain isn't nearly as bad. Since this is <laughs> at least tangentially about ticks, share any tick advice you have down in the comments. And of course, if you've explored the sensory meditation, tell us what you've experienced down there or any techniques you have for increasing any of the powers of your different senses. All right, my friends. Love to you all. We'll talk with you in the comments. You guys hear that? This is a tufted titmouse. There he is. Is that fun? Mm -hmm.